subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. A tornado hit West Bengal ahead of Cyclone Yas on Tuesday afternoon this week. Visuals captured by onlookers and of course posted on social media shows the clear swirling column of air and wind carrying dust and debris and moving around on the land. The tornado lasted for about a minute and a half in the late afternoon of Tuesday. According to reports, it destroyed about 40 houses in the area. But what is a tornado doing in West Bengal in the first place? Do tornadoes even occur in the Indian subcontinent? Turns out why yes they do. And where do they occur? In the Bengal Bangladesh region of course. In this video, let's look at the science of tornadoes and the history of their occurrence in India. I'm Sandhya Ramesh and this is Pure Science. So first, what's a tornado? Tornadoes are rotating columns of wind and air that are in contact with the earth on the lower end and the bottom of storm clouds at the upper end. This is the easiest difference between tornadoes or twisters and what we know as cyclones, typhoons or hurricanes. All of those three are the same thing. Tornadoes typically occur in the form of funnel clouds extending from the surface of the clouds with violently rotating winds carrying dust and debris and material in the air. These winds are usually greater than about 60 to 64 kilometers per hour. When there is a lack of moisture in the environment, a fully formed tornado might actually not display its typical funnel cloud or the visible rotating winds that are shaped like a cone. But tornadoes do come in various other shapes and sizes too, although their rough structure remains the same. They can be quite wide, they can be columnar, they can be rope shaped, but most tornadoes are narrow columns of wind widening at the top and shaped like a funnel towards the bottom. Tornadoes can also be very loud, especially up close, and they typically tend to sound like a combination of really powerful jet engines and waterfalls and a train. They aren't necessarily loud when they're farther away, and it's reported that tornadoes on planes can actually typically be quite silent until they're very close. Tornadoes also emit a lot of infrasound, and tornadoes also emit on the electromagnetic spectrum. They are not driven by electromagnetic processes or lightning, but they do tend to affect both when they occur. Tornadoes tend to lower the cloud to ground kind of lightning strikes and rates in their clouds and in the regions where they occur. Where do tornadoes occur? They actually occur in many parts of the world, but the country that sees the maximum number is of course the US, which sees three quarters of all tornadoes in the world. The highest concentration of tornadoes outside of US occurs in Argentina, followed by, surprise, Bangladesh. Tornadoes can often precede or succeed a storm, feeding in on the warm, moist air. The one that came this time preceded the cyclone Yas, of course. Tornadoes are ranked by intensity on something called the Fujita scale and later the enhanced Fujita scale, which is based on wind speed. The scale goes from F0 to F5 and classifies tornadoes into weak, strong, violent, significant and intense. How do tornadoes form? That's a great question and unfortunately we don't fully understand. But their formation we think seems to have something to do with supercells. Supercells are rotating thunderstorms. They carry something called a mesocyclone or a continuously rotating large updraft of wind or wind that moves in an upward direction. They are usually found isolated from other thunderstorms and they typically form in warm regions of a low pressure system and they move along in the same direction as an incoming cold front from a low pressure system. Supercells in general produce violent weather phenomena such as severe hail or thunderstorms and we also think cyclones as the mesocyclone carries a strong updraft of air. There is an emerging new theory that tornadoes actually form closer to the ground rather than closer to the cloud tops. 
Recently, in 2018, researchers analyzed some of the most monstrous and powerful tornadoes and realized that when they compared radar measurements and wind speeds with photographic evidence and timestamps, they found that the storm's funnel was actually already on the ground much before radar picked up any rotation. The researchers then noticed that radar that was closer to the ground picked up rapid rotation first before rotation started to appear higher up in each of those tornadoes that they investigated. So they concluded that the part closer to the ground spins first and then touches the clouds and not the other way around. Just like with a cyclone, the center of a tornado is called the eye. It is a circular area several kilometers wide of mostly calm weather and mellow winds and even clear skies. The eye is surrounded by the eye wall and the most severe storms of the tornado occur. Till date, only two people have claimed to be in the eye of a tornado. Both were farmers from the US and I'll leave a link to their stories in the description below. Tornadoes are powered and grow until they peak as long as there is an inflow of warm, moist air. Once a tornado reaches its peak, which is technically called its mature stage, the rear flank downdraft or winds that accelerate towards the ground at great speeds start to wrap around the tornado, covering it with cool air. As a result, the inflow of warm air is cut off and eventually this leads to the tornado's dissipation. While tornadoes are not common in the Indian subcontinent, they are not unheard of either and the Bay of Bengal region is especially prone to tornadoes. Tornadoes grow quickly on vast plains, although they occur on various kinds of terrain. But the winds in the mid-upper troposphere also split around the Tibetan plateau, allowing the westerlies, which is winds that come from the west and flow towards the east, to be stronger in the Bengal region because they split into two. Tornadoes actually do occur historically in the Bay of Bengal region, they are most likely to occur in the late afternoons during the pre-monsoon months, which is this season of March to May in the Northeast India or Bangladesh. The first documented tornado in this region occurred near Calcutta in April of 1838. The deadliest tornado in all of history, which killed 1300 people, also occurred in Bangladesh in April of 1989. Historically, between the years of 1838 and 2001, a total of 86 tornadoes occurred in the Bengal region. By contrast, Northwest India and Pakistan have seen only about 15 tornadoes between the years of 1903 and 2012. Needless to say, as with most other extreme weather events, these patterns and these numbers are not likely to hold steady for a lot longer. In the future, it is very possible that we are likely to see an increased frequency of such extreme weather events.